course two, lesson 38. Let's talk about graphs today. Graphs that are going to show up on page 273. Got some pretty cool graphs going on with this. <coughs> Excuse me. Graphs helps us understand information. It's a way that we can understand information that we can help us out. And I'm going to draw a bunch of graphs today, so bear with my handwriting. And we're going to talk about tire sales as our first graph. graph. So I always like to look at what the graph is talking about. So I try to figure out, the first thing I do is I look for the title. A good graph should have a title. Then I look at what the graph is um, showing me. Okay, down my first column, I have months. That's obvious. And then I'm told that there's a key, and this represents tires. Um, in quantities of 100. Okay, so in January, it looks like there's 400 tires sold. In February, it looks like there's 600 tires sold. And in March, it looks like there's 550 tires sold because I only have half a tire. So how many did I sell in March? Well, I got 500 whole, and I got half of another one, so that should be 550. In the first three months of the year, I sold 400, and 600 is 1,000, so 1550. So a graph can be a nice, easy way that we can write things down. Now, I can also draw a bar graph. Bar graph. Again, um, number of cans collected. Look for the title. Easy to see a title on these because I'm putting them down for you. Okay, here's my graph. Um, this is number of cans. This is each room. Okay, and then my graph has a bunch of lines going horizontally across. Okay. This is number of cans in a thousand. Okay, so I can take every number and multiply it by a thousand. Then I can write down each room. One, two, three, four, five. And I could draw in what each room collects. I could draw in this one. That looks like 5,000. Then maybe room two collected 8,000. In room three, maybe they collected 9,000. So I go up went a little too high. In room four, maybe they collected 4,000. Oops, too far. Let's try to fix that because my eraser's a little bit big. 4,000. And maybe room five, they collected a whole 10,000. So you can see. You can, that way you can easily tell which one collected the most, okay? You can see that room five collected 10,000, which collected more than rooms one and four combined. Okay, now another type, type of graph is a line graph. Now I know someday you're gonna be doing bowling in PE. In a line graph, there's a little break in my line graph. I'll show you why in a minute. This is uh, your bowling scores. And this is number of points scored. And this is each game. Notice there's a break here, because the reason why there's a break here is I'm not going to write anything below the number 160, because I didn't get, in my bowling game, I didn't get less than 160. No, that was me it would be a lot lower than that because, you know, I don't bowl very well. Mostly because I just don't have a good form. But you'll be learning that in PE. you learn how to have a good form. So in, if you know the top score in bowling, top score is 300. So in the first game, maybe I bowled a 160. In my second game, maybe I bowled a 170. In my third game, maybe I bowled 175. And then in my fourth game, I went back down to 170. 
My fifth game, I did a lot better. Bowled a 180. In my sixth game, I bowled a 185. Okay? So a line of that would look like that. And that's a line graph. Okay? You can say in general, and the line graph is helpful because you can say in general, my score is improving. All right, so one more graph. Oh, not even close. One more graph, a pie graph. A pie graph, otherwise known as a circle graph. This is where Aisha spends her day. Okay, she spends half her day at home. That's 12 hours. Maybe she spends six hours at school, eight hours at school, I mean, and four hours somewhere else, wherever that somewhere else, maybe on the way to school, maybe out with friends, wherever. Okay, so you can say that you could tell that this graph represents 24 hours, so 12, 4, 16, plus 8, plus 24. It's a whole day. She spends how much time at school? She spends one-third, because 8 over 24 reduces down to one-third. Okay, now something you should be aware of with graphs is sometimes graphs can be misleading, and I'm not going to draw these two. You look on page 276. Page 276, there are two graphs, graph A and graph B. They both are showing annual rainfall. But the difference between those two is how they're showing inches. In the first graph, they're showing inches in 10 segment in segments of 10, and in the next one, they're showing it in segments of 5. Both graphs are telling the same information, but graph B is a little misleading because graph B is showing graph B is showing that there's a much more extreme amount of difference in the years. So that's pretty important too. Now, example six, and I'm writing this down. I'll know if you watch the video or not. If you draw out example six, draw example six. Which of these two graphs is better to display height from age 10 to 14? You have a bar graph and you have a line graph. Now take a look at that. If uh, Todd's height gradually increased during these years, which is displayed better? Well, graph D really shows his display of his growth between ages 10 and 14 much better than that one. Graph C kind of makes it look like he changed height instantly one night. And that doesn't really happen, although sometimes your parents think it does. So make sure you have that done. Try practice A through G pages 276 and 277.